The area around the Vulture Mountains has a wide variety of trails to suit many types of off-road driving. Open, sandy washes, smooth, fast tracks, and rocky technical trails, all with panoramic views of the Vulture Mountains. It's a beautiful morning, and the birds are chirping. From the staging area, we'll head across the Little San Domingo Walk. Just a few months ago, this was a raging river. Now, it's just a big sandbox. Once across the sandy wash, our first challenge of the day proved to be a sticky gate. Where we grew up, a gate and a fence meant to keep out, but that's not necessarily the case here in Arizona. The Arizona State Land Department has great maps available that show where you can travel without straying onto private property. We got through the gate and made a left which led us up to a scenic vista overlooking the wash. From this vantage point we could look across the Little San Domingo Wash at the White Tank Mountains to the south. We took a quick look and headed back down towards our next stop. It wasn't too long before we found a few more challenging sections of the trail. We encountered ruts and washouts that required thoughtful tire placement. Wish we got that on video, we lifted a tire pretty good right there. I guess without at least a few challenges this wouldn't be as exciting. A little further up the road we noticed a somewhat unusual saguaro. This one has four massive arms which are very tightly grouped. We were on our way to a hilltop cave that we had discovered on our last trip. I saw a map where it's labeled as the party cave. I think the official name is Natural Arch. Okay, this is the road that goes up to the party cave. I'm sure on the video, it doesn't look steep at all. Hi. <laughs> but we've been here one time before. Mm -hmm. And when we were here last time, what did we see, baby? Um, two people in ATVs that couldn't get up the hill. Uh, Very steep. So the hill's so steep that somebody couldn't make it up there on an ATV. That's That should tell you something. Yeah. So here we go.
I locked the differentials to help us climb this steep and rocky slope. Kawasaki clawed its way to the top without a problem. You did it! Woo! <laughs> All right, so here we are at the party cave. Not much of a party going on. Not much of a party. It's still early yet, though. Yeah. First one's here. Well, yeah, I guess second one's here. Rattlesnake's supposedly here. Although we have not seen him. Still being very watchful though, right? Yes. If it wasn't going to be 110 degrees, this would be a great place to set up and relax for the afternoon. But since we had to complete our ride before it gets too hot, we loaded up and headed out. We slowly headed back down the hill from the cave, enjoying the view on the way down. About halfway down I jumped out to do some trail maintenance. The trail got easier and we decided to have some fun. Dukes of Hazard style. This crested saguaro looked like he was waving at us. So we stopped to take a quick look. Then we were back at it. It wasn't too long until we came across another gate. Fortunately, this one was easier to manage. The trail section after the gate is particularly scenic because you're driving directly towards Vulture Peak. At this point, we took a little detour to look at what I believe is the Cactus Queen Mine. Documentation of the mine is sparse, and there is conflicting information regarding the exact location. I found this mine site to be particularly interesting because some of the mechanisms were still present at the top of the shaft, which gave an idea of how the miners and ore would be transported in and out of the vertical shaft. The Cactus Queen was registered in August of 1941 and produced fluorite, which has a variety of industrial applications. The initial application includes the quotation, fair roads, but county will assist in repairing. We headed out, and after leaving the mine, we found ourselves in a dense growth of choya cactus. Choyas are beautiful to look at, but it's best to steer clear. This type of cactus has devilish little spines that embed themselves in whatever they touch, and they don't come out very easily. The 
camera always seems to make everything look so easy. So I found this spot to do a little demonstration. The roll gauge is reading about 22 degrees, but everything still looks level on camera. <laughs> Looks like the little guy is still hanging on. It might seem like overkill when you see us wearing helmets. Ouch! <laughs> but you'll understand if you've ever been smacked in the face by a tree. And the heavy gloves are because pretty much everything out here is trying to sting you scratch you, or bite you. Sometimes, we're not sure if quail remember that they can fly. So we are on our way back to the truck now. And we're making an effort to be out of here before it gets too hot. After driving us through the trees, I got a little feedback from my co-pilot. Are you actually on your map there, Magellan? Yep. Okay. The next part of the trail dipped in and out of small washes as we headed home. One last find for the day was this little stone cabin. It's unclear what the history is on this, but I can't imagine it was a very easy life out here. With the cabin behind us, we were on the final stretch. So I figured this would be a good time to make Carrie walk a little bit. While we were crossing the wash, we noticed this really cool eroded rock formation. I used the skid plate on a rock ledge. Oh, oh heard that. That's a good one. And drove us through some more trees. Now that we were back to the main wash, it was time to have just a little more fun before we headed home for the day. Sand. I took over the camera work for a while and put our stunt driver at the controls.
Can you tell she likes it? Once up to speed, the Kawasaki just floats on top of this soft sand. One more turn and we're back at the truck before it gets too crazy hot. Another great day exploring the trails in the desert. Oh no, we got booted. Oh. Hope you enjoyed riding along with us today. We'll see you next time. Got a little bit of cactus.